folks, Joseph Sabora here. As you may already know, Grease Live is going to air it on Fox this Sunday. So I decided to review the movie version that's based on the 1971 musical by Warren Casey and Jim Jacobs, which is of course called Grease. And this is the version that stars John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John, which at the time John Travolta was becoming a rising star after starring in the TV series Welcome Back, Cotter. Yep, he later went on to do films like Carrie, you know, which was directed by Brian De Palma, based on a novel by Stephen King. Uh, and then later he wound up becoming a star on the dance floor in the film Saturday Night Fever, which was directed by John Badham. Yep. Which also has producer Robert Steinberg who owns the production company RSO Records, which also produced this movie. So that's cool. Because now, by the time he did two of these films, he now became a huge star. Yeah. Olivia Newton-John is an Australian singer who had been in some several films uh, before she finally got the role as Lee Sandy. And together they both had chemistry. I mean, I guess the idea was they wanted to cast her as as an Aussie because originally it was she was just going to be cast as just an American. Yeah, which makes sense because it would have focused on that. But I guess they had to do some major changes with the story, making her come from a um, a different country. And by the way, this is the uh, Blu-ray edition called the Rocking Riddell edition, which is based on the 2006 DVD release. Yeah, the one that actually had. Um, two exclusives. One had the uh, the T-Bird jacket and the other one had the Pink Ladies jacket. Wow. <laughs> yeah, but they only include that in several stores. At this rate, Target had the Pink Ladies uh, edition, but other stores just carries the T-Bird one. It's pretty hard to find, but I guess you could probably find that edition somewhere on eBay or something, or Amazon, in case you're lucky. So, who knows. But, that's okay. I mean, I could have picked that up a long time ago. Because I would have been able to own that. I used to have the soundtrack for the movie, too. Um, in fact, we had that soundtrack uh, back in 1997. That only had all the songs from the movie, except a few of them were missing. So, that's a shame. But, I don't know whatever happened to that soundtrack. I think we lost it during the move. So anyway, back to the Blu-ray that I got. Yeah, this this one was released in 2009, May 5th, by the way, just after my birthday. They restored all the extras on the back. Yeah. And this, of course, um, includes uh, the 20th anniversary master, that which the film came out in 1998 at the time. It had a theatrical re-release uh, back in March in order for the celebration of the film good idea because you know they wanted to make this movie all um, digitally remastered with perfect sound the way it was meant to be but they plastered the uh, original Paramount Pictures logo with um, the 1986 logo with the Biocom company byline and it has the music um, yeah the one that they've been playing in several films well some movies and they also had played that theme mostly in trailers uh, back in the 70s. And I know they played that in um, the home video logo. Yeah, you know that theme. And, yeah, they they basically just um, put it all together. <laughs> but anyway, this movie originally came out in theaters on June 16, 1978. Out of its six million budget, it was a huge smash hit. But let's get to the review. It stars John Travolta, Olivia Newton John, along with the T Birds, Jeff Conaway, who later went on to do the TV show Taxi. Oh, and of course, Babylon 5. He's been in several films. Sally, he's no longer with us. Barry Pearl, Michael Tushy, been on some several movies and TV shows. Kelly Ward, and now we get to the Pink Ladies, starting with Didi Khan, 
who later went on to do the TV show Benson. And then after that, a couple years later, Shine Time Station as Stacy Jones. Yeah. Jamie Donnelly, Dinah Menoff, and Stocker Channing. Yep. She was a great actress. Um, went on to do other films uh, later in her career. Yeah, she's the oldest of the bunch, surprisingly enough. And then the rest of the students had uh, Eddie Deason, very funny comedian. Yeah, he's been on some several films. Yeah, always sort of playing the nerdish type, but yeah, he's always been fun. I like the guy. Susan Buckner, Lorenzo Lamas, went on to do a lot of stuff later in his career. Dennis C. Stewart. Annette Charles, with the school staff, includes Eve Arton, a legendary actress um, who's been in TV shows and movies, um, including The, the Mother-in-Laws, Duty Goodman, Sid Caesar, yeah, a great comedian who worked together with Carl Reiner, you know, Mel Brooks, and all these other legends, too. Alice Glossley. And it also includes uh, Joan Bondell, Ellen Travolta, you know, John Travolta's sister, frankly Avalon, who's been in all these beach party films with Annette Fricello, and also Sha Na Na, a yeah, proper group uh, from the 70s, uh, which, um, yeah, they had a TV show uh, back then, so they joined in for the movie. And, and it's directed by Randall Kessler who directed the TV movie with John Travolta called Yeah, The Boy in the Bubble and later went on to direct films like Fly the Navigator in 1986. The movie began in December of 1958. We meet a young Australian girl named Sandy Olsen, who's played by Olivia Newton-John, who meets a young, handsome man named Danny Succo, who's played by John Travolta, as they spend their summer vacations together at the beach and they soon fell in love with each other. But then Sandy realized that she might be returning home to Australia and will soon not be able to see Danny again. But then he assured that this was only the beginning of them. So then on their first day of senior year at Rydell High, Danny of course is the leader of a greaser gang known as T-Birds which he arrived with his best friend and second in command, Kinnicky, who's played by Jeff Conaway, along with Sonny, Duty, and Putsy, all played by Michael Tushy, Barry Pearl, and Kelly Ward. As they soon arrived, they just talk about what they did during the summer, yeah, which that's what leads to the story, because meanwhile, you know, their counterpart known as the Pink Ladies, that's held by their leader, you know, Betty Redso, who's played by Starka Channing, along with their friends Frenchie, Jan, and Marty, all played by Didi Khan, Jamie Donnelly, and Dinah Menoff. And once they arrive, they soon meet Sandy, who's a foreign exchange student joining in for Rydell High, who, um, after her parents decided not to return home. So she wants to be friends with Frenchie, who fits in into the group, and then they, they actually tell their story about what they did during the summer. And that's what leads to the song, Summer Nights, you know, where it just goes back and forth with uh, Danny talking about how he met this girl at the beach. And, and Sandy is talking about uh, her story that he just met a guy at the beach. Yeah, and there you go. <laughs> and it, it was beautifully shot, too, because once they go back and forth to their conversation, you know, Tammy Moore, Tammy Moore, and all that, we saw that beautiful shot uh, at the last part of the song where they show both Danny and Sandy you know, singing that last verse. And in that beautiful sky, you know, they just show both of them together. Yeah, it, it was... Um, a perfect transition right there, you know, being shot in 2x35 aspect ratio. Right there. 
Anyway, during those days and nights, uh, Red Out High um, was celebrating their football team, while Sandy is now a cheerleader. You know, she's doing all these posing and all that, and suddenly she bumps into Danny, which, unfortunately, what she just found out, um, Danny isn't exactly the man she once knew, and that's where it's been discussed. So she winds up staying at Frenchie's house for the slumber party, yeah, with the Pink Ladies group, which didn't turn out quite well either for her because she winds up smoking a cigarette. She, she tried it out, that didn't work, and she got a cut, yeah, while having her nail polish, and she winds up in the bathroom while Betty trying out a blonde wig, and she was actually mocking her by singing the song. Look at me, I'm Sandra D. You know, along with the group. And suddenly, the T-Birds, um, you know, with Danny around, decided to um, hang around with the girls, you know, spending their, their nights together. While uh, Sandy wants to stay home and, you know, walk outside and, and singing the song, Hopelessly Devoted to You, you know, thinking about, you know, Danny. Yeah, since she's already been upset and missing him so much. Like the T-Birds and, and the Pink Ladies are just hanging out with uh, Kinnicky and Whistle, yeah, making out with each other, till all of a sudden it was being interrupted by Leo Bonomo, who's played by Dennis Stewart, who happens to be the leader of a greaser gang known as the Scorpions, and quickly damaged his car. Hard to believe. So then the next day at the auto shop garage, you know, Danny and the T-Bird gang decided to help Kenneke out on his car and try to give him back in shape to the song Grease Lightning. Yeah, definitely the best part of the film. And I love that song too. I mean, you definitely see them on the dance floor you know, while building a new car. After that, uh, Danny was trying to reconnect with Sandy by joining a sport. So he asks uh, Coach Calhoun to, to join any kind of sport that he wants. Well, he tried basketball, baseball, wrestling, and and they all didn't work out until he finally joined the trap meet. And that's when Sandy uh, spotted him and he accidentally got hurt. So he finally impressed her again, apologized to her, and and things seem to go pretty well. So then after that they wound up having a date at the Frosty Palace where the T-Birds and the Pink Ladies gang had joined where somehow Kenneke and Betty had had a fight and then suddenly Frenchie decided to drop out high school due to the fact that you know she just uh, dyed her hair bubblegum pink in order for her to go to uh, beauty school. Well, and that's where we meet a guardian angel who's played by Frankie Avalon actually singing the song Beauty School Dropout. <laughs> anyway, a few weeks later a school dance had arrived and a local TV station which at this rate uh, they had the Channel 5 logo which I think dates back to the 50s and early 60s. Um, which pretty much is the the same logo they use for the uh, the one that they have for KTLA Los Angeles. It, it was basically an American Bandstand type of show called National Bandstand that's um, hosted by DJ Vince Fontaine, you know, like a Dick Clark type of character or so. But unfortunately, it was sort of like a fictionalized version of Alan Freed, who wants a flirting with Marty throughout the night. While Betty and Kennedy attempt to score off for one another, while bringing Leo and his girlfriend Cha Cha, which that's when we found out that uh, she was his former girlfriend of Danny, so they basically uh, dance off together. Yeah, which it had that great scene where they started uh, dancing to all these '50s tunes, and and at the last part there was the dance called. Uh, Hand Drive, yeah, that was the best one, too. Uh, it, it was sung by Shana Na. So then, days later, they wound up at a local drive-in theater, which was actually filmed at Pickwick Drive-In in Burbank, but it was kind of rumored that they filmed it somewhere 
in Studio Drive-In in Clover City, but I think pretty much it's just Pickwick. So, once again, Danny tries to apologize to Sandy for what he did uh, during the dance-off by giving her a ring. But then when he started doing all these stupid mistakes, you know, Sandy just took off, um, gave him back his ring, and and then he started feeling very depressed and sad and lonely that now he's he's outside singing the song to uh, Sandy because yeah Sandy hurt him really bad completely where he was at the swings yeah in the background you could see all these uh, drive-in feeder uh, intermissions yeah all these classic intermissions that you saw where they show like a bunch of refreshments you know dancing around you can find that um, on YouTube and other websites too because you know what I'm talking about. So things seems to go on for the worst as we find out that Betty is is rumored to be promiscuous. And yeah, that's where they had the song, uh, There Are Worse Things I Can Do. Yeah, which I'm surprised that song was not featured in the soundtrack. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised to find out uh, when I got the CD. Then there was a challenge race between Leo and Kinnicky which they settled the score on becoming who's the best greaser. Unfortunately, uh, Kinnicky got knocked unconscious after Pulsey uh, opened the door. So then Danny decided to take over, and they wound up racing all the way into the Los Angeles River. Yeah, that's where they shot it at. And that's when Sandy uh, spotted uh, Danny all the way far away, and already she's feeling very lonely, sad. And she felt really bad about what happened you know, during that day. So that way she'll finally get back to Danny again. Which, by the time the school year had finally closed, they now decided to celebrate a carnival. And that's when uh, Sandy finally changed her image. Yeah, a bad girl image. Yeah, smoking a cigarette too. and <laughs> Just to greet uh, Danny and, and boy... <laughs> Danny was really going crazy and wild, so so they finally wound up together again to the tune, uh, You're the One That I Want. You know, they're just dancing around until at the end of the carnival, they soon realize that they won't be able to see each other again since now they're already ending its uh, senior year at high school. So Sandy and Danny decided to took flight by going inside the Grease Lightning car, and it's, I <laughs> know, and, and this was like a silly scene because they wound up um, just after they were they were singing the song uh, "We Go Together," yeah, which they do all these uh, bebop and all these lyrics that they put into it. Like they even put in that lyric from "Tutti Fruity," and and also they even throw in the the Chickmunks voices in, in the mix of uh, of the song uh, "Witch Doctor." Yeah, I thought that worked pretty well. It was like a remix or so. So anyway, Sandy and Danny wants up uh, taking flight on the grease lighting car, and they <laughs> they wave their friends goodbye, and they flew all the way soaring into the sky. And that's where at the end we see the Rydell High uh, yearbook, and we just show all the pictures of of all the students um, who spend their time during their senior year. Yeah, to the tune of, of Grease by uh, Frankie Bally. And yeah, it's definitely one of my favorite musicals of all time. And it is indeed a real high school musical. Not that crappy uh, 2006 film that Disney Channel had released 10 years ago, which suddenly became a franchise. Yeah, which I know introduced us to guys like Zac Efron, Vanessa Hugens. And even the, the actress uh, Ashley Tisdale. And yeah, I mean, if you had to sit for those movies, you'd be better off watching Grease because this was a way better film than any of them. And it's no surprise because this was a huge hit. Um, as I mentioned before, um, it had an awesome cast. I mean, they definitely played the roles very well. I mean, John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John definitely had chemistry together. They, they work as a team, something that we didn't expect. 
And I know Olivia Newton-John started doing a lot of songs. I mean, they later worked together um, for the film Two of a Kind, which came out in 83. And that wasn't a good film at all. It, you know, I mean, I know they were trying their best for Travolta and, and, and John to, to become together on screen, you know, just to help their careers going. Because I know Olivia Newton-John was doing that musical um, Xanadu. A guilty pleasure, by the way. <laughs> I mean, it was a cheesy musical, you know, filled with, um, that's like set in a, in a different century, and, and they started using roller skating, so I, I don't know, I thought it was fun, in my opinion. And she went on to do the song Physical, uh, back in 1981, that became a, a great hit, I, I know that song too, uh, she was pretty hot at the time, and she went on to do like other I think she went on to host that one TV show, uh, which is a fairy tale classics uh, that Hanna Barbera produced. I think it was called Timeless Classics or something like that. Yeah, I gotta look it up again. Because uh, I remember I watched that uh, when I rented it on VHS at the library and, and all that. And Travolta just, um, you know, after his uh, performance in um, Saturday Night Fever, yeah, I think he was the right choice to play Danny Suko because I know originally they were gonna get. Henry Wrinkler to play the role, which I know that's going to be, that would be really something too, because then he'll pretty much be typecast as uh, the Fonz. I mean, he'll just pretty much play the same character like he does on Happy Days, so I don't think it wouldn't work. So I'm glad he dropped out. And the rest of the cast, um, which includes Dee Dee Khan as Frenchie, I thought she did a great job playing that role. And she definitely has that personality of of a girl who has a soft voice. And the fact that she wants to join beauty school. I mean, I don't blame her. I mean, she's, she's perfect for that. Even though she has to go to high school before she does that. You know, in order for her to get her diploma in order to join beauty school. So that's true. Um, also, um, Stalker Channing. Yeah, considering how older she is uh, to play... Uh, a high school student. I mean, even Olivia Newton-John was a little older, too. Man, I thought she was really <laughs> something as uh, Betty. Also, Jeff Conaway, uh, God rest his soul, he was such a great actor. As uh, Kinnicky, you know, I, I thought, man, they really hit it on together. Um, surprisingly enough, uh, there were other versions that came out, uh, you know, during the musical before we had the movie version. And believe it or not, they actually had Patrick Swayze uh, playing Danny Zuko. And I'm like, wow, that, that must have been something. And they even got Richard Gere, too. So, wow, that's cool. And that was before they became stars. <laughs> it, it had a wonderful soundtrack. I mean, once again, since I had the CD a long time ago, I, I wish I had the CD if I could find it. I mean, all the songs were just as memorable as I remembered it. Everything from songs like uh, Summer Nights to uh, to Grease Lightning, Hopelessly Devoted to You, to uh, Beauty School Dropout, um, Look at Me, I'm Sandra D, to uh, You're the One That I Want. I mean, it, it was just perfect. I mean, it's you just never get tired of hearing all these songs. I mean, you can dance around to it, you know, remember all the lyrics, Everything. Because I remember back in 1997, after, before they were doing the celebration of its 20th anniversary re-release, they were doing a remix of all the songs from the movie. And I remember listening to it on the radio, yeah, which was on 102.7 KISS FM uh, in Los Angeles. So, wow. <laughs> that was really cool. I, I remember watching this movie a lot when it was on TV, you know, Channel 14 used to play this film all the time, which is KCOP Los Angeles. And they later played on other stations too. They, they played on HBO, uh, Cinemax, all the time. We started renting the VHS tape many times at the library, because I know everybody is a big fan of this movie. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So I, I never get tired of that movie. A lot of favorite scenes in the movie, but I guess I could talk about one. Um, but my favorite scene was always been at the end of the movie where, where, 
you know, where Sandy had a bad girl image of her, and yeah, you know, she was trying to smoke the cigarette, and <laughs> I know they they were teaching her how to do this, and just so you can finally connect to uh, to Danny, and yeah, then Danny was like going wild too. He's like, <laughs> he's like, he's like, wow. I mean, the movie was so proper that they wound up doing a sequel to this, uh, but this time with Michelle Pfeiffer and Maxwell Caulfield, along with um, later voice actor veteran uh, Pamela Sigal. And that was not a good film. I mean, despite the fact that they brought back a few of the original, uh, the original cast of the film, like Dee Dee Khan, for instance, it was just a totally unnecessary sequel that didn't need to be made. But Paramount was just desperate, so they had to do that. It happened the same time with uh, John Travolta by doing a sequel to uh, Saturday Night Fever, Staying Alive, which was uh, written and directed by Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, that didn't work out pretty well either. <laughs> I mean, these movies um, weren't big hits uh, at the box office and had terrible reviews. So, yeah, it didn't work. Once again, it had uh, some great actors, uh, legendary stars like um, Sid Caesar, who's sadly no longer with us, along with Eve Arden, you know, you know, who played the teacher in the film, or the principal too. And um, also um, actress Alice Ghostly uh, as the uh, auto shop uh, teacher, you know, helping them out. Yeah, I know she went on to do TV shows like uh, Bewitch and Small Wonder. Yeah, all these stars are no longer with us, sadly. And and I know we had Eddie Deason playing a nerdy student, which they kept picking on him a lot. But he's been in some several scenes, especially uh, at the dance show. Uh, especially at the school dance, you know, he finally gets the girl after that. And he's like rocking around. <laughs> it was cool. Lorenzo Lamas as the the football player, which uh, Sandy was pretty much interested in before he finally went back to Danny again. Also, um, it had some wonderful filming location shots. I mean, some of the scenes were shot at the Paramount Picture Studio lot, such as the uh, the Frosty Palace and the Auto Shop Garage. Uh, the beach, however, was uh, shot in Malibu. Rydell High was shot at Venice High School, a real-life high school in, in Venice, California. And the drive-in feeder, was, which is the Pickwick drive-in feeder, that's where it was shot at, in Burbank, California, which was operated by Pacific Feeders. And that was the feeder I'd been to when I was four years old where I went to go see Turner and Hooch and Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. What's well, sad to say it was closed down and demolished in order to become a shopping center, which remains today since 1992, because we now have Denny's, Pavilions, El Polo Loco, Staples, and Chase, along with all the other stores in the mix. Yeah, and everywhere I go, I always remember it. <laughs> They started getting a sing-along version that came out in 2010, which is only shown in select theaters nationwide, which the film is digitally remastered once again. They started to digitally remove some of the signs, the Coca-Cola signs that they used in the film, because um, of the animated sequence that was done by John Wilson. Yeah, definitely a very beautiful animated sequence that you never forget to the song Grease by... Frankie Valley. Um, they had a Pepsi logo in there. They wanted to remove all the Coca-Cola logos by blurring them out. But with the digital technology, they started to remove all the Coca-Cola signs, so it's no longer there anymore. And of course, they had re-rated the film to PG-13 instead of PGs, which mostly because they had all the the sexual activities and and cigarette smoking in the film, which is true because the film would have been PG-13. It makes sense. And already, uh, we're already going to get the, the new uh, Grease Live that's going to air it on Fox, uh, starting uh, on Sunday. 
and let's hope this one will turn out okay because this is the one that has Carly Rae Jepsen, Julian Hoff, and uh, Vanessa Hugens from High School Musical. So I've yet to check this out because it's a free hour event. I think it's going to be, you know, definitely playing exactly like how the movie and the musical was, you know, were. So, who knows? Let's see how it turns out. But either way, I love the 1978 film version of Grease. It's definitely the best musical of all time. And definitely the best film of 1978, no doubt. And it definitely uh, is the best film that John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John had starred together as a team. And, and, and it's also, of course, Travolta's best role since uh, Saturday Night Fever. <laughs> yeah. So either way, check this movie out on VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, Laserdisc, on TV, HBO, Cinemax, Netflix... You name it, because you'll never get tired of it, and that's all it is. So anyway, I give Grease five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.